This is One on One. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Uh. Finally, finally. Chris Mad Dog Russo Dave, has come good to, to see public you, television. How you doing? Uh, I am great. This is Chris Mad Dog Russo. You just saw him on uh, MLB Network High Heat. That's a show, but you also can check him out on Sirius XM, uh, host of Mad Dog Unleashed on the Mad Dog Sports Channel every day from 3 to 6. Love it. Got the radio and the TV, so I fly. I can do the TV every day at one, same studio, run down two doors down, same building, and I start the radio at 3 o'clock, so it's a good scenario for me. Chris, was this the career you envisioned? Uh, you know, I didn't, uh, Steve. I thought I was going to be a play-by-play -play guy in, in baseball, so I went to the winter meetings in 1982, right out of college, Rollins College in Florida, and I went to the winter meetings baseball that year, and they were in Hawaii. Mm. So I went out to Hawaii in December of 82, thinking that I was going to get a job in Major League Baseball as a play-by-play -play guy starting the minor leagues. And the job I ended up getting was in Jacksonville for the old Jacksonville Suns baseball team. Double A, Tom Seaver pitched there once. You know, Henry Aaron used to play in the ballpark. So I ended up in Jacksonville in early 83. Mm. Make a long story short, I ended up in radio shortly thereafter. But I thought I was going to be the next Vince Scully. And I wasn't. When does, timing on this, I'm trying to get this right, <clears throat> so you're in radio all that time. Right. Uh, F-A-N. Right, F-A-N in 89. 89. Right. Uh, I was in Jacksonville and Orlando between 83 and 87. Trying to get to New York there, uh, no, I not say? not necessarily, no. no. Really? I was doing talk radio. I loved Orlando, Florida. I went to Rollins, so I got the school right. and the job scenario right there. And then I got a job at WMCA in New York. Uh, in 87, and the guy who hired me was Rick Scalar. Scalar promoted the first Beatles concert at Shea in 1965 and put Cosell in the air. There was an ad broadcasting magazine. If you talk like a New York sports fan and can deal with the New York sports teams, send tape and resume. I sent a tape and resume. They got 54 tapes. Sat there for five weeks. I got a phone call for St. Patty's Day weekend in 87 by Scalar. They hired me. Tripled my salary. Went from 18000 to 54000 And I came up to New York, and I started working in April of 1987. And uh, Francesa, Mike Francesa. A year and a half later. Mike and Dog happens two years later. September of 89, we how, began. How many years? Uh, 19. By the way, check out our website at steveoutabato.org. We did a, when the, when the Mike and the Mad Dog documentary, a 30 for 30 special came out on ESPN. Uh, who do we have? We had Ted Shaker. Ted, Ted. Oh, he, Ted came in here. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, right. Excellent. I didn't know that. We have all of the, the important people. No, so, he, by the way, check out that documentary. It's great. No, they did a good what job, the 30 for, for 30. You, uh, you know, Personally, I, what did you feel like? Anytime, first of all, it's ESPN. Uh, so, you know, that adds a lot of credibility to it. Thirdly, it's an hour. Uh, and it's a radio talk show tandem. So you got a radio talk show tandem on a 30 for 30 on ESPN. Uh, I'll tell you that was interesting. The one before us was the Celtics and the Lakers. Loved it. Multi-part series, three-part series, oh, fabulous. They did a great job. It was like six hours. And you are seeing promos for when you. Bird is winning an MVP award. And right out of that, there's a promo for Mike and the Mad Dog on the next 30 for 30. That is a lift. And you said what to yourself? I said, my God, I must have made it. Remember, <laughs> I followed the Bird magic thing in Orlando doing right. sports talk in the 80s. I was doing radio down there. I love that rivalry. And here it is 20 years later, 30 years later, I'm sitting here watching the recap of that on a 30 for 30. And here's the Mike and the Mad Dog promo. So it meant a lot. Unbelievable. So that happens for more than a few years. You, 19, make, yep. you make history. It's an extraordinary uh, must listen every day. You make the move to Sirius in oh, 2008. 2000, summer of 08. Oh, wait. How tough a decision? Uh, it was a hard call to make because, you know, I was leaving a established, uh, <clears throat> an established show. I was leaving a guy that I had been with for two decades. I loved the radio station. Very, very tricky call to make. I just thought it was time to make it. Uh, Mel Carmerson, who uh, owns Sirius, uh, you know, I had a lot of respect for him, and I had worked for him because he had owned, obviously, Infinity. So he owned FAN, which is an Infinity station. So from that perspective, I had comfort with him. He convinced me to do it. Uh, they pay me. And listen, the money was about equal, so everybody seems to think I ran over here. No, no, it wasn't, because I gave up the TV simulcast with right. Yes. People forget that. A yes uh, carried it, right? A yes carried it, and I got paid for that. No, 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 no. Separate. Separate? That's, That's awesome. a separate deal. The idea no, of no, no, no TV with the series. Chris, sorry for interrupting. The idea of being able to program your entire channel. You, you got that channel. For five, five years, I did that, yeah. Five, 
that I haven't done in the last five. That's a hard job. You know, I'm doing a show every day, and I'm also coming up with people to sort of help me along to put together a channel. That's tricky. You were in management. Yeah, it's hard, and I'm not a management guy. I Why think we learned that. Oh, you gotta hire and fire. You gotta listen to a lot of tapes. You gotta make some difficult decisions. I mean, I wanna just do a show. Well, I tell you what I didn't realize is I did five hours on Sirius, and five hours on Sirius without that many commercials is a very, very difficult order. It's like seven hours a day on terrestrial radio. Radio, and when I started, I didn't realize how hard that was gonna be. Just to establish a show on Sirius, you gotta establish a new show on a new format wow. without commercials, local or national, that's a major assignment right there. Then you throw in the management thing, almost became too much. What about the national thing? Going from <clears throat> being in New York, New Jersey, our metropolitan area, I mean, right. the guy right. with Francesa, you go to the, you're doing a whole national thing. Yeah, How it's, did it change? It's, it's tricky. Uh, you have to do a different kind of show because the people who are going to listen or call me are not going to break down, you know, what Terry Collins did in the eighth inning of a June game against the Mets of whether he should have or pinched Torrey it. Or Torrey at the Yankees. Or Joe Torrey at the time of the Yankees. They're not going to break that kind of stuff down. So you have to look for more of the big topics that right. can sell in Walla Walla, Washington. Now, you have a lot of New Yorkers who have Sirius. Remember, there's a lot of New Yorkers around the country who miss their local radio from New York, and so they buy Sirius, and there I am. So you got a lot of displaced New Yorkers listening, so there is a almost a Northeast feel to it, but it is a trickier show to do from a national standpoint. Obviously, a lot more college football. So there's some certain things you have to do. You gotta learn how to do it. It's tricky, and the, no commercials. You gotta learn how to pace the show a little differently. Chris, was it tough? I mean, for you as a hardcore Yankee fan. No, uh, yes, <laughs> facetiously, Steve says that. I do. Uh, I, I used to, as, when I listen to you every day here, I'm sitting there going, Chris is a hardcore San Francisco Giant fan. Right. And I want you to tell everyone, and you, and you actually, not that you don't like the Yankees, it's worse than that. I used to hate him a lot more, but go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> it's a question of degree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm a hardcore. Our, our president Neil Shapiro, hardcore Yankee fan. Same here. What's your problem with the Yankees? Well, my problem with the Yankees really goes back to my father, who was a great teaser, and my father was a huge Yankee fan. DiMaggio, uh, even Garrick when he was eight years old, wow. but DiMaggio and Mantle. And when the Yankees got good in the mid '70s and won championships in '77, '78, won a pennant in '76. Reggie, I'm, Reggie, I'm 15, 16 years of age, my Giants are terrible, and he's tweaking me every day on look, look what the Yankees did tonight, look at this comeback against the Red Sox in 78, look at Oscar Gamble and Jim Spencer and Thurman Munson, and I got annoyed by it. I think that's where my real Yankee hatred really? began. Really? That's it? Oh, he drove me crazy. It's really... You don't want to be with a winner? No, I don't know what it was. Me, I'm a rebel when it comes to sports. So I think the fact that my father was such a Yankee fan, made me go against him overall. Then I got, then I have Mike. So oh, Francesa. I, I, who's like a big brother, who's as big a Yankee fan as my father used to be. Who they had I, a relationship. My, my father and Mike were close. Right. And Even then, when you guys weren't getting along, uh, they stayed close. Uh, good boy, right on. And then the Yankees win in 96, 97, 98, <laughs> right in the middle of Mike and, and the middle, and about, a giant stick again. And, and you cannot be talking about McCovey and Mays because that time passed. Not exactly Who right. Who cared? Plus the Giants are bad for a good part of this year and the Yankees are winning championships. So I got it at a young, at a youthful age on one end, and then I get it from Mike when I'm in my career doing yeah. talk shows with him. So, and then I leave, and then the Giants get good and win three championships. So I'm not there to really have fun with it with Mike. Uh, Chris, when you were coming up, and you are now the way you were then, you're you. Right, change. Did any agent, did any... Oh, absolutely. Did they say, Chris, you gotta tone it down. Oh, absolutely. Seriously? Oh, gosh, yeah. I had a general manager in Orlando. This is probably in uh, 86. I had started, I had relatively successful that market, and he wanted me to get speech lessons. Stop. Because he thought I talked too fast. So I actually went to the Orange County Medical Center with a speech therapist. Making I probably went twice a month, uh, twice a week for six months to see if Elocution? I could get my speech and all that. Fiction? Exactly. And, you know, well, I think were. it had some effect. I think it helped me a little bit. But as it turns out, I got to the right market because I went from Orlando. I didn't go to Orlando to, you know, the Albuquerque, New Mexico. Or Green Bay. Yeah, right. I went, or Chicago, a town that's Midwest, a little that's quieter. Right. I went Orlando to my hometown, which didn't have a problem with speed and the way I talked and pronunciations and everything else. And my lack of pronunciation, not having a good guide there, has actually helped me because it's made me more of a character. 
per se. But that and is people you. People like characters. And by the way, when you started to do Letterman, what year did you start doing David Letterman? Uh, 19, my first appearance there was February of 91. And you just were you? I was just me, yeah, he was a big listener. He and was, he, yeah. he wanted to make fun of me. So he used to make fun of me. You were the foil. They gave Donald Duck a show, which is great opening line. So I did Dave for a long time. I, I did Dave for a long I period of there. I love doing that. Plug the MLB. Oh, MLB, I love it. It's serious high heat. It's uh, MLB high heat every day at one o'clock. That's the best network in the world to work for. They let me, I tell you, most networks that are owned by the owners, right. NFL network, NHL network, you name it, you have to be somewhat careful because it's an owner scenario. This, owned by the owners, they let me say what I want. Now, I don't go absolutely nuts like I would on the radio. We saw the opening, though, Chris. You right. say... There you go. And by the way, we had Al Leiter on, and I see what, you with him as what well. What a great guy. He said the same thing. Best Nobody, place to no work. No pressure. No pressure. They basically let you do what they want to do. And remember, editorial content for a talk show host, you know better than anybody, is everything. They got to let you be you. And the MLB Network has always let me be me, so give them all the credit in the world for that. So I do an hour show every day talking baseball, even in the wintertime, but mm. how bad can that be? How much, I, before I let you out of here, how much do you love your career and your life? Well, remember, the, the thing for us, you two, you made a hobby a career. 99% yeah. of the American public does not, is not able to make a hobby a career. I would be following sports anyway, so the fact that I've been able to do it for 30-something years as a living is a major, that's a gift from God. And so God gave me this memory. It's almost like God put me on this earth in the mid-60s. I'm an only child. It's almost like sports is my friend. Mm -hmm. It's like my sibling. So I had this, and he gave me a memory. So you put that with the passion, and you know, I'm six years old, he created a talk show host. Mm -hmm. Make a long story short. By the way, I, I'm not going to say where Chris Summers is, sure, because people flock there, but you got to see this guy run on the boardwalk. Oh, I love you too. I, Steve saw me for years on that boardwalk, running up and down, I, I to, and I, I finally, get, I, we finally got together doing a show know, I, together. I, I stopped Chris, he was running, because everybody's bothered. Hey, you gay man, dog. I said, Chris, he goes, yeah, what? I go, it's me, Steve Arado. He goes, who? <laughs> no, so, I, yeah, you did. Did you I did. say that? Yeah, I, no, I apologize. No. And I That's said, a bad job. You got to come do our show. And he goes, what, what, what show? And finally, 10 years later, that's all it took. That's all it took. Hey, you know what? Thanks Great to have you with us. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. This is Chris Mad Dog Russo. Every day, Sirius XM. Uh, 3 to 6 at high heat, 1 o'clock, uh, Monday through Friday on the MLB Network. They let us plug it, people. There you go. That's the Mad Dog. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET Studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, Berkeley College, the New Jersey Education Association, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the law firm of Gibbons PC, NJ Best, and by Adler Aphasia Center. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.